Before we jump into this exclusive content, you're tuned in to No Rap Cap Podcast, and this episode is sponsored by Mobile Cam Records, a record label founded by Westside New Orleans legend Mobo Joe, who introduced us to the group called Ruler Juvenile. Going into New Year's 2022, they have some big things coming, new music out right now, so be sure to follow them on Instagram at Mobile Camp 90. Support the people that support us. If you want to get you some merch or tap in what they got going on, hit the link in their bio, and they'll pop right in your face. I go by Gas the Host. No Rap Cap Podcast And this episode is sponsored by Mobile Camera Who know who you is Who don't know And where they can find you at On all social media uh, Marcelo Marcelo Ghetto Twitter uh, Jet Life General Twitter I mean uh, Instagram And I'm just You know A nigga from the streets Who happened to make it Right, right. We gonna take this shit back to the beginning, man. Uh, Marcelo, uptown, growing up in the Magnolia. Take, 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 take us back there. How that shit was for you coming up? As in me coming up in the Magnolia, I think. Um, I mean, it was like I ain't gonna say like everything else because the the, the game has changed so much. Like, but I know it was a, it's a lot of OGs who looked out for me. Like, if, if it wasn't for them dudes, I wouldn't be alive. Right, right, like right. they still like when I try to do stupid shit, they steer me every which way but possible. Like I can honestly say I fought my way in the streets. Right, right, right. So, so you, you, you what's what? How, you're an OG right now. We gonna get to all that, but I, I won't ask you what even defines a street nigga. It's a new damn era. Bro. So, like, our. Assumption on it will be something different from other people, right? And us as OGs, we look at it a different way from the way they look at it. So when you throw shit out there, it's like you you give you 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 give people opportunity to say, well, I'm gonna pick this side or pick that side. Because some of them young dudes just don't understand it. When when it when we say street niggas, it's not just about like holding your ground as and killing. That shit is respect. Right, right, like, right. you feeding people when, like, in the community, like, you known in the community. Like, you getting that other kind of money, when you got some other kind of money, ain't nobody in that project gonna get put out the project. Like, I ain't, in my time, I ain't never saw nobody get put out the project. They, them old dudes just wouldn't allow that shit because they sitting on the people's porch and all that kind of shit, they fall behind their rent, they gonna pay them. Right, like, right. them dudes taught us different shit, like, well, like, can't no old lady pass me with no bag in her hand? Like, uh... I, I was real a, a shit. door and shit like that, right? And the, a lady would be trying to get in the door before me. I'd be like, no, I'm holding the door. Because that's how we was taught. Like, and they, like, they be so used to these young dudes, it be, they be appreciative to it. But I'd be like, this is how I was taught. Like, this is what we do. A woman go in the door before us. That's it. Old lady not going to carry no groceries. Like, this is what I was taught. So it's just in me. It's just automatic things that I do. But these dudes not taught like that. So they real and our real are two different things. Thanks, thanks. That's big right there. Hey, what what made you start rapping, Marcelo? When you how, how you what influenced you to even fuck with the shit? I ain't choose rap. Rap chose me. Take you like, through that shit. I was in um, middle school and I met this little dude named Big Al and Lati, and they just used to be running it. So one day I just was running it with them. They introduced me to a dude named Devious D. Devious D, my mentor, right? So when I got introduced to Devious, he was like, rap. I rap. He took a liking into me. Little did I know him and Musa was already connected. I already knew Musa. Me and Musa like grew up together because my godfather and Musa daddy was like best friends. So Musa used to work in the store. I used to my godfather used to pick me up from school with everything. People day. don't know who Musa is who watch the spider manager. Like Jet life. My godfather used to pick me up every day, and my godfather would go hang around there, so me and Moose ended up becoming tight. Because we were the youngest ones right. around there. Like, he on the cash register, and I'm just hanging in there. I got to wait till my... <laughs> yeah, gotta, yeah, you know, yeah. so we became tight. We built a relationship, and one day, I told him about Devious. He was like, Devious, I'm about to bring you over there. Little did I know, like, he was, the one, he was the one putting the money behind the thing with Devious. Like, he was at the CEO of the company, like, they had a company together. So, long story short... Musa bought me in. Devious was like, I want you to get on this song called Head Peep Popper. 
I'm like, I ain't doing no tripping. Roll it. But Devious had the confidence in me because Devious right How old you at this time? Man, it's like, I don't want to lie, well, this is like 93, 92. 92, 93. Yeah. So I get in there and I do my verse. Devious look at me and say, write Lil Trap verse. Now, mind you, Devious rap his ass off. He could have easily wrote Lil Trap verse, right? Lil right. Trap is a seven-year-old dude. But he told me write it. I'm like, all right, change that. But that was just him seeing something else in me. Like, Devious gave me a lot of opportunities. That was the first time you recorded? That's the first time I recorded. And they put it out? Yeah, hey, Pop. How the feedback was it? Instantly? Let's see. Lo- they loved it. Yeah. They loved it. Like, because there were so many people behind it. Like, people always come up to me and be like, oh, I remember that Hey Pop Papa, but people don't know that was me because I didn't go by Marcelo. Like, but you went I went by my real name. Just say it. Right. And Devious, man, that shit was on the radio and all kind of shit. Like, Going crazy. Like, because... Devious was on another level. Like, as in there. Like, Devious, like, it's a lot of stuff that that dude did for me. Like, I remember one time, like, Tim Smooth, Buzz Down, Nigga, you Gregory D, and Devious all by on Wild Wayne, right? So, they do an interview. Moose like, come on, come with me. When I get there, all them freestyle. Devious don't freestyle. He tell me freestyle. Who, who freestyle? Buzz, Buzz Down, Tim Smooth, and Gregory D. But Devious didn't rap. When there was Devious time, he slid back and said, go. So he saw something in me, and, you, and I went. But I just sounded different because my influences were different. My influence come from Coogee cool Rap. That was a fucking moment, huh? Right. But did you know at that time yeah, that no, that was a moment? No idea. I ain't had no idea. I ain't getting no fucks. I was ready to get back in the project. That's some great niggas right there you just named. Like, I'm telling you, like... like you was in the circle with them niggas spitting. Say and like, I, it was more or less to where it's like, I respected them as rappers, don't get it twisted, right? But I was like, oh, all right, this 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 what we doing? Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. I used to be writing, <laughs> I used to write so much shit. Well, like once I started doing it, I just used to write shit. So I write shit to where it could go with any beat. So all I had to do was hit a beat for a little while and I'd be like, let me see which one I'm gonna put with it. Right, 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 right. That's I, some fly shit. Hey, 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 that's some fly shit. Hey, when, so, Fast, what is fast forward? How it came to the point to where I'm fucking with no limit. I'm with Master P. After the devious shit, like I kind of fell back on music. I was doing too much stupid shit in the streets. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I just fell back on the shit. So um, I end up doing some shit with some some dudes out the project called Bootleg. Uh, it was Future. Uh, Marie. Out the Magnolia? Yeah, Future Marie, Legal Locksmith, uh, Miles Scaletti, and La Nino. Right? So we formed the group. And like, that's who gave me my name. Like, my partners gave me my name. Like, they were like, yeah, because I ain't know nothing about that shit. And then I, before they gave me the name, like, my partner Legal Locksmith and, um, and Miles Scaletti gave me the name. So I just checked out the name. I was like, cool, because we always doing like mafia names. I started doing stuff with them. And it's a, my, my, my godfather, Victor Newman, ended up getting a lawsuit. When he got the lawsuit, he was like, I'm a, I, I, I know you can rap, I want you to rap. He want to invest in you? Yeah, but he was already dealing with Dodo. Him and Dodo was real tight. So I had new Dodo for the penitentiary, but we wasn't like that. What Dodo was from? Calio. Not, not, not from the ghetto commission, huh? No, I'm talking about Dodo, who di- who I did Tough Guy with. Because, oh, right, because right, before right, I got right. to the No Limit shit, like Dodo didn't bought me to the No Limit shit. Like Dodo was just a, a street nigga. Right, right. So they just they just rolled up on P with you? Let me give it to you. Go ahead, go talk to So you. I go to Dodo, I go by the studio, there's a lot of us in there. And I just keep in mind like I used to write so much. And I used to, like I used to have to write to other people beats like a, some shit like that, right? So I had raps for everything. Long story short, I go by Doe. I mean, I go, Victor bring me over there to the studio. Dodo like, all right, we gonna put you in. We are gonna do a compilation album. The compilation album was called Tough Guys. It was like me, uh, some some cats from 3NG, like Cheddar, rest in peace, Cheddar, rest in peace, Shaq. Um, rest in peace, Black, not rest in peace, Shaq. Shaq's still here, my bad. 
But they gonna be mad at you, man. Nah, that's my dog. That's my dog. That's my dog. That's my dog. <laughs> but niggas saying rest in peace, niggas who still here. <laughs> say, you got me full of this. You're doing that to me. That's gay as ninety three. <laughs> say, that what you call it? Man? See, see. <laughs> but like when I got with them, we did a compilation album. So Dolo and Victor had a relationship with Master P. Like I ain't having a relationship with Master P. So they decided they was gonna fly out. Like we put the compilation album out and put it in the streets. And they decided they were gonna fly out and did and. Go holler at P about helping them with the compilation. They flew out and, and let P hit a compilation. P was playing for, um, he was playing basketball then. So they flew out to one of the basketball games and they let him hit a compilation. P called them back that night and was like, um, whoever this is on number three, seven, eight, nine, I think we should just do an album on him. The person just happened to be me. Right. So when they, when they get back, they come tell me, we like, okay, let's roll. He put things together and he was like, look, because it wasn't, a, it wasn't me that put that together. Like, he was doing a favor for Dodo and Victor, but like, as in Victor was my godfather and him and Dodo was tight. Right, right, right. right. So, they told us, come to Baton Rouge. We went by Carlos Stevenson's house. And, and when he started putting on beats, I started rapping. I remember Los, Los had a spot in Gretna. Yes, like Carlos, my yeah, spot in Gretna. Yeah. Yeah, and like, crazy. I knew like, my my whole album was already in my head though, like I really didn't write for Back the then? for the still brick for the brick living album. I ain't write that. Hold on, hold on, going too fast. No, hold on, slow down, slow brick down, slow down. I didn't write hold it on, like that. Slow down, down, slow down, slow down. We got to hold on, hold on. We go, hold on, hold on. You fucking me up. Hold on, we gonna get to that. That's next. That's next. That's next. So, when you first seen Pete, what the conversation was? As soon as you seen him. About 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 the shit he was saying. I want that nigga that was on number seven. I didn't see him. You never seen him? Mm -mm. The, 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 when I saw Pete, um, the first time probably was for the How You Like It Baby video. I had not already, the, he had not already cut us a check and shit. Man, that's strong right there. I really, that's I had, I had never met him. I knew him though, because the, the, the dude Rashid, like Rashid out the Magno, that was his cousin, but I never, I had never met Pete. Right, right, right. So boom, then the Brick Living come. Well, we go, go out there and I the write gate. the Brick Living album, album, and that shit pop. Like we didn't expect that shit to do that. I like I was that really right in the there. like, whoa, literally, like I was in the project. No, nah, I was for, I, I, I like remember this shit like yesterday. When I found out my album went gold, I was like, what the fuck? How quick that was. The album would go in three weeks. Hey, hey, hey. What 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 the feeling was like when you realized what the fuck had happened? To be honest with you, like all the way. It wasn't really like uh, like it was a pump because Keep man, there's no rap. Listen, no, it, listen, listen. It was a pump because I realized people realized the talent, right? But I was like, I was on some money shit. I was like, let's hit the, we about to hit the road because I was looking at the shit as, like when I found out about the shit, I was in the project. So once we find out the album do that, it's tour time. Like, I know we about to go get some real money because Chicken. he popped us. But like, I can honestly tell you like as in by us being so street, like we was back in the streets with that money. We would bought a few things and all that kind of shit. But like I tell you, I was back in the streets with that money. How the girls was at the time fucking with a nigga, the females. I think like as in us, we, we, I always tell people like the, the, the reason I made it because the whole city got behind me. I'm saying with Buku females on your top, at your top. <laughs> Say, at this bro, time, this, this back then, man, this, 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 bro, this back then. I have 11 kids. Now 11 kids, OG? Right. But fuck that. Well, I'm trying to tell you. I nigga, told you what, I got 11 kids. Man, that's true. That shit was ridiculous, boy. Like, because the, the game was different. That shit was ridiculous. At, 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 at the moments of when you were doing your shit like that, what, what's the most memorable shit or the most time you think you reminisce about? Like, give me, give me that story that you be like, man, that was, that was the shit no matter what it was overseas, no matter what, man. Just one of them ones you always talk about. You tell 93, you hear me? Like, bitch, I remember who, one of them. You hear me? As in the moment, it had to be like BT Live. But I didn't realize the moment at the time. Because I didn't realize like 
I was on there with Monique. John Sally. Like, mm. I, these people wasn't, like, I, I just was a nigga out the project, but, like, we hadn't already, I hadn't already had it understood that, like, we wasn't trying to push out, like, that street shit. So, actually, I plotted the interview for BET Live. Like, when I say gathering higher education to teach others, I knew I was going to say that before I got on there. Because I, I, I don't know, as in, I can't honestly tell you where I got it from, but I knew I wanted to push out something different. Because I was like, boy, they about to give me this scenery? Like, we really threw, like, listen, well, like, it's different. If you go back and look at that shit, like, we was throwing real money out there like it was a strip club. Right, 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 right. On the way to that motherfucker, we like, say, stop and get $2,000 worth of ones. We just going to throw ones. The driver like, we can't stop at a bank. We got to go say, well, stop at a store. So we had fives, 20s. Like, we literally throwing that shit in the crowd. The people were looking at us like we was crazy as a motherfucker. Man, that had to be the best feeling ever, huh? I think the feeling um, got better because over time. Because, like, I saw a narrative that I was pushing without even knowing. Like, I don't know what, like, I ain't, I don't know, like, as in why I plotted to say, yeah, then higher education to teach others. But I mean. knew I was going to make that statement, right? That shit came to you just like that. Like, I think me and Doe used to always be talking about ghetto, ghetto, ghetto. So I just went and made up something that ghetto meant. Right, right. But I knew right. it was going to stick, like, as in, because I knew where I was at. Like, I ain't no Monique and all them kind of people was going to be there. But I knew it was going to stick, because it right, made right. sense. That's BT Live. That right. I got to do better than just music. Yeah, I yeah. I got to stick them. Boy, that's the New Orleans nigga. Like I got to write. I was plot. I ain't lying. I was plot. I ain't no sense of me lying. I was plot. Real shit. Real shit. Because you got to realize the people that was going on that motherfucker at that time. Like, and I just happened to get that spot. I'm like, boy, we got to figure this out. Right, right, like, right. Like, I plot. How it came to the point to where this shit started ending with No Limit? What happened? Like, what people don't understand is this, right? I never had to deal with No Limit. Like, he just agreed to executive produce my album. We took ourselves out the, out the deal. Like, that was probably one of the biggest mistakes we made. Like, that's, like... Why you, why you say that? Because Doe got killed. After you took yourself out the deal? I w- we was working on an independent album, right? If we Maybe if we wasn't working on that independent album, we'd have got that other 500000 and he wouldn't have been in that predicament. But we start understanding the game of it. And like we met Russell Simmons, and Russell Simmons was like, if you could get Baby and, and, and Master P both to say they're going to support you, we got you. Damn. So we had a deal on the table. Like the, the, the that plan, didn't happen? The plan was this, bro. Like when I put out that, um, when I put out the Streets Got Love for Me album, nobody sold more records than me but um, Trick Daddy. That was the year when Trick Daddy came out. But independently, nobody sold more records than me. But, like, Adam, we built relationships with people from Priority. So they was like, go independent. And then we met Russell Simmons, and he was like, you could get more money. And I think the biggest thing was one time we went to P, and we was like, what's up with the second single? And P like, we're not doing a second single. And we was like, why? He was like, do a new album, get a new budget. He was right, though. Because all we had to do was say, okay, we're working on a new album. I could have done that shit in a week. We'd have got 500 more thousand. But we was looking at it like, yeah, then because we knew people and people put us in positions to learn things, we was like, we're going to do an independent album. We're going to get both of them on it. So, like, I'm, I'm the first person to have, the, have an album with Taz Money and No Limit on the same album. Right, right, right. I think I heard you speak on that before. That was something about, like, the Noah and the Cali coming together or something you had. I, like, I mean... That shit, that's the Hambra video. Right, Like, right, the Hambra right. video just is crazy. But it show you how, like, yeah, then real motherfuckers could get together when it's about some bread. So, 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 so how you even made that happen? I didn't make it happen. That was Dodo and Victor. I was youngin' back then. Right, right. And right. it was a lot of other motherfuckers. Like, it's a lot of other dudes who get credit for that because it's like real niggas out to know you who ain't make no moves on them dudes out to Cali. Real niggas out to Cali who ain't make no moves on them dudes out to know you. But the video was fucked up because Chris them from Fat Fat and all that, my partners, I love them to death, right? But we messed the schedule up. We were supposed to shoot in the Magnolia first and then in the Calio later on. They set up in the Calio first. So while we was in the Calio, we had to shoot 
everything that was in the Calio. So after we shot the scenes with them on the roof and stuff, we had to shoot roast Adam. By the time we get in the Magnolia, it's pitched up. <laughs> so, That's it, some live it, shit, but they... Tell you facts, bro. It's right. pitch dark. And them dudes, like at that time, they was at it. So we didn't know how that shit was going to turn out. Like me and Doe was looking at each other like... How you, how, how you feel about making the music now? Like the, how this shit is with the streams and the rap. How, 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 how you feel? You, don't feel you, feel, you got the same energy that you had about music back then? You got the same love for it? That shit oh, definitely away. the same love. Definitely the same love for it. Definitely. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's like, I, I understand that by me being who I am, it's certain energy that I push out. So I draw a certain audience. So I don't really be reaching. Like, I right, don't reach right, for right, no right. other audience. Like, I do the music I like. So my fan base just gonna roll with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not reaching for another fan base. Like, I'm not looking to do... And I'm not saying it won't happen, but I'm just telling you, when I go in the studio, I do what I like. Right, right, right. And I know that, it, but it's been working for me, so that feeds my fan base. Like, let them go. They'll go talk about it and all that. I'm not reaching. I ain't doing no reaching for no fan base. Because... My fan base been rolling with me all this time, right? You still talk that shit, though. Like, oh, don't get it twisted. These young niggas, I would give them a run for their money. <laughs> and that's facts. That, I would give them a shit. run for their money. And and, and no disrespect, boy, just like I've been through more. Like, I saw more. You got more to talk about? I got a whole lot more to talk about. You might not be putting it together with how them niggas putting it together, though. That's the difference, though. <laughs> Because like motherfuckers always think you gotta do better. I can't I can't do what you could do better than you, right? Oh, but I could do me. When they do that, then I'm gonna come on G. Because that's their thing though. They run that though. They they that's that's what they run. I don't knock it though. Like I just be like, you ain't with that's that, what you uh, do. Marcello, you ain't with that type I'm of- not changing my I don't change my style. Like my music always talk about me. If any motherfucker who listen to yeah, my music, you know who I do that shit. I ain't never step. I don't step into the lane, bro. I don't step. I don't step in the lane. Oh no, with. indeed, bro. Take it. They'll deal with you. You fuck up and play with them if you want to. They gonna deal with you. Hey, hey, hey. You get a lot of love in the city. Hey, that's another thing. How you rate the support towards yourself in the city? The support you get. How you rate that shit? You talking quiet or loud? Talking shit. I'm saying you talking. How my how. It is when it's quiet, as in quiet or loud. No, I'm saying like how you rate the support. I understand exactly what you're saying. I'm talking about quiet or loud. Like you talking about as in how it's portrayed loud, like as in nah. Underground, like niggas know what's up. Like it's a lot of these young niggas out here, but I don't ask them niggas for nothing. But as in like, I think like the OG shit is portrayed wrong. That's a oh yeah, yeah that's, that's nice. Because that's like nice. it'll be a lot of niggas who like expect shit from these little dudes and all that kind of shit, right? And so what you're doing is when you when you expecting them to be you, like you want them to you want them to do shit that you wish you would have did. So sometimes you'll stem the wrong way because he don't want to do what you want him to do, but that's not his identity. That's your identity you're trying to push into him. Like I just reach. And I say, how can I help you? What make you an OG? You got to be helping, man. Like, it's a lot, like, I think it's a lot of motherfuckers who get credit for being Not OGs just no old from nigga. just old niggas. Old niggas is just niggas who last. And that's, like, the, that's, the, that's a big thing because, to be honest with you, like, that's what's represented for the OGs. So you saying to be an OG, you got to help? What the fuck you doing? Like, if you're a 40-year-old nigga and all you're doing is selling drugs, you're a flunky. What you what you could you can't teach nobody nothing. Like what you learned. Like the, come on, bro, think about us, right? We've been through some shit. Like we've been there, been there, right? right. Which they don't know. We've been there. We've been in the trenches together, right? Facts. All right? Look at what you're doing and look at what I'm doing. You gotta be able to teach them to do those other things. You can't teach them the streets. They already know that shit. So you gonna teach them how to be the biggest drug dealer? You ever saw one retire? Shit. Yeah, at the graveyard. All right. But that's all they could teach him because they ain't doing nothing else. Like, I don't knock no nigga for dibbling and dabbling, right? But what else are you doing? Because if you're not doing nothing else, like, you're not really giving back because you can't even teach a nigga how to do something else. Just an old nigga. Just an old nigga. 
And motherfuckers, a, a lot of motherfuckers who still around to get credit for that as just being the old nigga because they're there. They're in them little dudes' presence, right? So them little dudes just be looking at them as old and being around and taking their advice, but they crashing them out. Crashing them out. Who is they Left crashing right. them out? Yeah, they crashing them out. For sure. Because they'll let one of them little dudes walk past them saying I'm about to go kill somebody and just be like, it's cool. Boy, ain't no young boy. Ain't, I, don't, I, I don't give no fucks. Ain't no young boy about to walk past me and just be like, I'm about to kill no somebody, say OG, I'm about to down him. You about to down who? But 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 what you what you think about like the other angle, the other angle of motherfucker saying, man, it ain't my business. I ain't trying to get that's, into that. That's bullshit. No, check, check it out, check it out, check it out. They ain't my business. I ain't about to get into that because that shit could backfire you on me and I fuck around and get killed. So, 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 cause niggas wildin', man. Niggas be on a pill, niggas be on a stay out of my business, OG. I fuck with you, I respect you, but stay out of my business. Sometimes, and, and sometimes listen, you gotta know when to fall back. You can't just be over trying to overpower. I think we don't overpower. understand what, like, as in what we doing. You don't tell them the dudes what to do. You tell them it's another option. Like we be too busy going in there thinking you gonna tell him exactly what he gonna do. He's not gonna accept that. You can't like. I always make this as an example, right? I don't care if I don't know a young dude, right? And he walking past me to jump off a bridge. I'm not about to hold that boy while he jump off no bridge. What I'm going to do is, when he on his way down, I'm going to say, say, YG, let me holler at you for a minute. Right. I know you going to do what you going to do. Give me a minute. Let me holler at you. And I'm going to tell him all the people he going to hurt, the things he about to sacrifice. That's me, though. Right? And then I'm going to get from around you. Now, if you go jump off that bridge, that ain't got nothing to do with me. But I will feel like a jive-ass nigga to let that little dude pass me by and just let him go do that. Like, it's a lot of old niggas who helped me. Like, you think about the many times we was about to crash out, right? And some old nigga said, boy, come here. What you tripping off? And you had and you had enough respect for him to be like, all right, at least I'm going to hear him out. Then what that nigga said make a whole lot of sense. Right, right, right. So he right. stopped you from crashing out. Sometimes we turn our head when they about to crash out. They be like, look at his little stupid ass. Ain't Boy, you OG ain't no shit. OG. No, because you don't get no fuck about him until you kill your fucking kid. Now you won't knock his ass off. Man, you could have helped that shit. Like, we don't move until the shit get on our steps. That's facts. That's how that shit normally go, man. That's how that shit normally go all over every hood in America. That's how that shit normally go. Hey, so, so Marcelo, if somebody watching our podcast and they fuck with you, what they could do to support Marcelo movement? Let us know you got, you got your podcast, you got the new shit you got going on. I mean, on. I got the podcast, Chopping know. Game, me and my OGG. We just dropped the hype. I mean, I'm just out here. Let them know where the, where, where to find the podcast at? Podcast, you find it on um, Boom Multimedia. Um, we got a lot of things going on. Like, I'm about to shoot a series called The OGs. Like, I'm, I want, I'm about to tap into this, this, this um, movie shit. Serious and shit like gotta that. Gotta get me in there, man. Boy, like 50 got me fucked up, boy. That nigga 50, boy. Look. Fucking it up with that. Uh, no, no, I don't mean, no, no. I mean, that 50 got me fucked up to think I don't want none of that money that he That's what I'm me. saying. Nigga yeah, fucking man, it up boy, with that fucking money. Boy, that shit real. Man, I want some of that. Like, you think we can't <laughs> tell those kind of stories? Boy, I want in. Man, and, nigga got so many stories to tell. I mean, 50 just showed you it's possible, though. Like, sometimes, as a nuts, like, you got to see when somebody show you it's possible and go, boy, 50. That what you're doing, 50? Okay, power went up. All right, I'm coming. Right, right, I ain't got to right. get your kind of money, but oh, I'm coming. I'm, I, I won't jump into that lane. Right, right. One thing I want, one, one thing people, uh, I put on the, I put on a thing on my YouTube, some questions they wanted me to ask Marcelo. Come on, and the I one, like this. Come and the on. ones that, that were popping up, come on, popping up the most like was, the one that, no riches. Come on, I like this. I like this. Come on. The ones who popping up the most, they say, man, ask him. Is him and currency blood brother. Everybody asks that, right? Talk your shit. Like, that's my brother in blood and spirit. Like, Spitter was just a young dude who I met when he was young, right? Our families had connections. Right, right, right. right. So, so he's not about logic and your brother. No. Right, right. My right. pa told me look out for him. My daddy knew Max? his daddy. Yes. Like, because, like, that was a different time of era. And then, as in that, like, he started actually coming in the project. So, as in, for us being around each other, we've been around each other since we was, like, he was probably, like, 
11 or something like that. Right, right, right. But, like, we have, it's, it's, it's a different ball game. In our time, like, as in, when your families connect, like, you connect. So, like, as in, it ain't nothing that I wouldn't do for him that I wouldn't do for a blood brother. Right, 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 right. That's blood. I, that so that's like blood. blood brother. That's what I'm saying. Like, say, when I lost my mom, like, I been on that, but when I lost my mom and my daddy, right, I started saying I don't have, I'm not doing that friendship no more. My niggas is my brothers. If I'm going to put you around me, I want you to have opportunity. We're not going to play all this hating shit. If we have a problem, we're supposed to disagree, all that kind of shit. But we, we, y'all my brothers. Right, right, Because right. I start protecting myself different. Hey, that that was the main one, though. Nigga, you said, but you, 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 you used to everybody. People that, always lie, ask huh? that because they don't understand friendship. Like, right. friends more, sometimes friends be more important than family, well. Because that's a person who doesn't have to love you. You got to know the next one. Come on. What happened when you and Mario P? Say, well, I can, I, I'm glad you said that, right? Because let me put, my, I just saw that little dude, right? And let me tell you this. This real facts, right? That dude was going through something. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Before, before, before you tell you. Wait, did, that was, did, you throw, did you throw a drink? Yeah, I was wrong. I already talked about it. Tell me the shit. Tell me the shit. Tell me the shit. Run the shit. Like, I, 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 pushed my, I pushed that dude into that. And I was wrong. So he was going through something. That's what you was at with. Right. But I wasn't, like, I was in the wrong state of mind. Well, like, my partner asked me this, right? I'm glad you said that, because my partner Vault, right? You know Cali Vault, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That nigga was like, so say, bitch, what happened with you and Mario P? Now, right? boy. Bitch, you throw a drink on the nigga, I said, and you go apologize on, on Instagram. I said, hold on, let me show you something. I said, one thing that I realized was I was wrong. Right? I said, listen, that shit was about almost nothing. And me getting in the wrong mode, I'm thinking he's talking aggressive, but that dude going through some shit. And I've already reached out to him and fucked with him, fucked with him, because I know he's going through it. So to me, to, to him, it's like a slap in the face because I know what he's going through, right? Right. I forget it. When we go through the conversation, I, I provoked him. That's the dumbest OG shit. Like, I felt bad about that shit. And niggas say, why you, why you do it on social media? Because it happened publicly. I asked him, I ain't never called this phone and said I apologize. That didn't happen behind closed doors. That shit happened in public. So that's how I apologize. I ain't got no problem with saying I'm wrong. I was wrong. The dude ain't did me nothing. And I fuck with him, fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? What possessed you, a nigga to throw the drink? That's me provoking. That's me getting back into being stupid mode. Like, that's why I'm telling you the way I was completely wrong. Oh, and you were drinking too, probably. Oh, we, I was, I was wet. Was <laughs> that ain't no excuse, though, whoa, because I like, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, right? You probably would have did that sober. It ain't no excuse, but you probably wouldn't have did that sober, though. By far, I would have never did That's that sober. That's what I'm saying. No but no, like I'm saying, like, as in, even as that, like, the sober, like, niggas be talking about getting drunk and all that kind of shit. Like, you still got to respect each other's friends. Like, right? And if I consider you a friend, you 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 have to, you get, you, you could get away with certain shit. Right, right, right. So you could say For some sure. shit. And I can say, all right, bitch, you feeling like that tonight? I'm going to get the fuck from around you. But tomorrow, bitch, I'm going to call you and see if you feel like that. Right? right and right. you probably won't because you was in a different zone. I ain't get that dude that opportunity. I provoked that shit. You admit you was wrong. Was I? I was wrong as a motherfucker. Bro. That's where it counted. And I wasn't scared. That's why, I, and, and that's why I did the shit publicly. like Because it happened publicly. Like, niggas always do some jab shit publicly bitch, and then yeah, call you yeah, on yeah. the phone. <laughs> say, well, my bad. That shit not real. It's not. But but like, as in me, I felt bad about the shit because like I, I push a different narrative, right? But as in me, I, I also show you, I go through mistakes. I, I make mistakes too. Paul, oh, listen, God ain't done with me. <laughs> and I be at church every Sunday.